Finding it hard to get over someone you love? Well, you're on the right channel because I'm here today to teach you ladies how to present as a high value, high status, high worth woman. And part of that process is really being able to overcome emotionally and get to the other side of some of the most and most difficult, toughest moments that we have to face emotionally as human beings, not just as women, but as human beings. And there is nothing worse than losing a love, nothing worse. Uh, many feelings in this world are terrible, but truly losing a loved one to death or to through rejection they've moved on they no longer want to be with us it's very very painful but in many of those situations when we do lose somebody we often don't have the answers to the questions that we seem to think are important in that time if this video sounds like something that'll be of interest to you something that's going to help you at this very difficult time by all means don't forget to subscribe like and hit that like button so that the algorithm can pick up on the importance of this video and of course share with every single person that you know needs to know this. And of course, if you're watching this before the Emotional Mastery Masterclass has been done, do, you still have a chance to get your seat. Love to have you on the live call where you can answer a lot of questions and we can really delve deeply into the emotional mechanisms of what makes us who we are and why we show up in the world the way we do. And of course, if you're watching this video after the 17th of April, 2021, then of course, I invite you to download the replay from my website, chinkiswell.co.uk forward slash shop. Now, moving forward, for those of you who do not know who I am, I am Chengi, and you, my precious one, are my world. So, so, so happy to have you with us today. Don't forget to become part of the family do hit that like button and hit that notification bell so that you're informed every single time I upload one of these videos. Now, this video was another video that I wasn't in the mood for creating because it is deeply um, emotional and must be handled with the greatest of care and the greatest of sensitivity because I know that if you're watching this video right now, you are in extreme pain. You haven't just stumbled upon this video. Chances are you have been searching for it because you are in a great deal of emotional pain and turmoil. In this video, I'm gonna presuppose and frame this video so that we understand exactly who and what I am talking about so that we're not going beyond. I'm not talking about bereavement. This video is not about bereavement losing somebody to sickness, death, or disease. That's not what this video is about. This video is really about losing somebody that you had fallen in love with, somebody you were either in a relationship with or somebody who captured your heart in a way that nobody has it before. And having that ripped away from you all of a sudden with no explanations or even with the best of explanations, it's very hard to see another future, another life, a future in fact, without that person in it. And part of them had become a little bit of your identity. Now this hurts to the degree and it is troubling and painful to the degree at which you are not emotionally built up. If you have your own emotional traumas to deal with and this is a re repetition of you being abandoned once again, if you grew up in a family where you were abandoned emotionally, abandoned by a parent or by both parents and you have a lot of trauma around abandonment, then this is going to be painful at a way deeper level than it would be perhaps for somebody who doesn't have that trauma in the alliance. And so, of course, you're going to feel it at a lot more painful, a place to a point where some people have gotten to a point of committing suicide because they just cannot deal with the, the re-traumatization of that wound. In which case, if you are in a situation where you are feeling suicidal, you're feeling so low that you're, de you're now truly depressed and night has become day, day has become night, you're no longer showering, life has taken a different turn. This this is the time to reach out for help. There is no shame in your game. This is just your emotions way of letting you know that there's something that is broken that needs fixing. And guess what? I always say to my clients, we'll always say to you ladies, there is nothing broken that cannot be fixed. Sometimes the fixing is a lot more work. <laughs> A lot more um, will take more out of us, but it can always be fixed. There's nothing that we can mess in our lives that cannot be repaired. 
Okay, so don't despair. If you're feeling low because of this thing, maybe you need to go through therapy, you need to get yourself a counselor, you can get yourself a coach who has an expertise or an area of understanding within the emotional realm. You can join the class, you can call me or any of my coaches. We'll be more than happy to listen to you, help you, stand by you and support you as best as we can. But really, in this video, I want us to talk about somebody who is not necessarily at that point. You're just depressed. It's a circumstantial depression. It's because you've lost somebody that you love. You're not going to be flying off the rooftops. Yes, food has lost its taste and the bed is like a torture chamber because you can't seem to close your eyes and dream and think without him being on your mind 24-7. This is something that is normal and this is about usually the bond that we create with other people, the bond that we create with a man, especially when we have been sexually involved with him. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean that for you to be bonded and really into somebody is because you've had a sexual bond. You can actually form a really strong bond with somebody who you've not had sex with because of the meaning you have placed on that relationship. You have have a finally found that person who hears you understands you because perhaps all your whole life you your whole life you've never felt understood seen or heard in that way and so the need he was meeting is more important and more powerful than the personality themselves and so you can be really sad really depressed even if you haven't actually had sex with that person if you have then you've got more of that chemical bonding and that biology and if you have it takes about two years for your neurochemicals to start to break up and come into alignment but we can actually help the process along we can try and speed it up and nothing of what I'm going to say to you today is going to be easy to do. It's not going to be easy to get over somebody you love and every step that you take in this direction is going to be counterintuitive because right now, even if you can't have the person, you want to hold on to the memories, you want to hold on to the essence and the pain has become synonymous with the person. So if we hold on to the pain of losing them, then we're still holding on to a piece of that person. And whilst the pain hurts, it hurts so good. Okay, uh, I know we've heard the song, sometimes it hurts so good, right? Sometimes the pain is actually a little bit like when you've done a good workout and you've done some proper lifting and you're feeling good and the next morning you can hardly walk that pain is kind of nice pain because it reminds us of the great work we did and how we're making progress with building up a stronger and healthier body it's the same thing with the pain we're holding on to that pain because it keeps us closer to that person even when we know we've lost them and whilst it's nice to indulge in that feeling it actually becomes very difficult for your body and the chemicals that are being flooded into your body to have a sense of that pain because everything that we feel has a chemical response that is dumped in our body and so now we are opening ourselves up to sickness to disease to longer term um, you know immune your immune system so much of your body now is going to be affected because you are not managing this as you should what I want you to know is that though we bond and though we hurt and though we have pain our bodies, our minds, and our spirits are designed to come to equilibrium. They're designed to come to balance. If you hurt your body, if you, if you get a scar, you get cut, your body is designed to send the white blood cells and to bring about a healing of that process. We are already naturally wired to recover. The body, the mind, and the spirit is wired to recover. But there are things that we can do that can postpone the recovery or make recovery that bit harder for our minds and our bodies to be able to do and so in this video I'm going to tell you stuff that you've probably seen on YouTube maybe you've been flicking around and you've kind of heard these things flying around but I'm going to say them to you but I want you to hear them from the perspective that they're actually going to help heal you and bring you to a different place and it's really important that you can see which is a really a bit of a paradox what I'm going to say to you if you can see See the the end, a happier, healthier whole you. You actually, in fact, 
stand a greater chance at getting that person back if that is your desire than if you entertain the pain and the sorrow because from it will come a series of activities and things that are going to start happening where you are going to think to yourself all right i'm going to do these things and then I'll get them back, right? But if you are actually in the process of healing, it's really interesting because you're starting to use all that energy you were putting on them, you're starting to use it on yourself, and they start to feel a disconnection to the energy because remember, we are all energy vampires and we will take energy however it is given to us. And if it's another person grieving over us, that still feeds our energy banks. But the moment you stop grieving and start to use that energy to heal, the other person feels, hmm, Something is missing. And usually that's when you find as you start to heal, your ex starts to call or you start to get your ex come back. There starts to be movement, okay, around the ex. And that's usually because you're healed. So I know you want to hold on to them, but actually if you do this, you are going to actually allow yourself to get them. I want you to remember something. When you lose love for whatever reason, that relationship has ended. Any other relationship that may come forth from that or through that is a new relationship. It has to be new. It has to be negotiated from scratch. It has to be uh, dealt with from scratch. And so I want you to think about it as a new relationship. Okay. So in order for us to get something new, we have to bury something old and grieve it, okay? Now, because you are young and beautiful, I don't care how old you are, because you're young and beautiful and you still deserve to have the love you crave and deserve, either from the ex who's left or from somebody brand new. I know you probably don't want to hear about brand new, but let's say we can create the same feeling you had with your ex with somebody better who can actually show up and be there for you. I'm sure if you think about that a little bit longer, you'll realize that it's the feeling you want to recreate. The person is probably, you know, interchangeable okay so that's another thing that you want to bear in mind that really the personality involved is a minute part of the process if you could recreate exactly the same experience but with somebody better more willing in a better position even more attractive even more healthier you would definitely be more willing to accept that deal so let's talk about some of the things that you should absolutely do. Let's talk with the obvious. At this juncture, you want to block, delete, burn, okay? Block. You want to make sure that you haven't got, he hasn't got access to you. Block all your socials. Block all. This is the only time that I recommend blocking is if you want to get over somebody that you love, you have to have a clean cut. Anything jagged, fractures are a lot harder to heal than clean breaks, okay? When something is fractured, it becomes a little bit delicate. If we keep having too much back and forth, back and forth, it's harder to heal. So we want to cut things clean. We want to block that person. It doesn't matter how it is read by them. At this point, it's about your survival. It's not about preserving their feelings. I know when we break up with somebody, we still want to preserve their feelings. We still want to handle them gently in case they change their mind. But at this point, they have made it clear that they don't want to be in your life and you have been the gracious high value woman and accepted their position and their decision so what you're going to do is block them you're going to delete their number so you have no way of contacting them because you don't have their number if you think there's ever a reason why you might need to or perhaps you were married or you have children then perhaps you don't want to block them and perhaps you don't want to delete their number because you're going to have to negotiate about the children okay and burn. Now, burning is the most fantastic thing. What you want to do is collect everything that represents who they are. This is going to be a painful process, but I promise you the process itself is actually quite healing. So you want to be able to collect everything that represents them, their clothes, their items, everything that represents who they are in your life. Put them in a box, okay, and burn it. Okay, burning is final, right? If you can burn it, burn it. If not, throw it away. But burning has a sense of final. See, part of why you're finding it hard to move on is that little trace of hope. And when we are hurt and broken and brokenhearted, we can really hold on to that little slither of hope because 
it's all we have but when we burn it somehow a part of you grieves better you feel like okay that's done that's dusted i can move on and i can start a whole new life and i can start to work on myself so this is the most crucial most important part also it saves you having to call them and say come and get your stuff you know um if it's obviously something of sentimental value to them um you know i would put it in a box and put it in the loft so that you don't have to kind of see it or deal with it now the second thing you want to do which is another counterintuitive thing to do is to make a list of everything that they did wrong see the mind has this way of forgetting the bad stuff and remembering only the good stuff it's coping mechanism is the way that we can tend to move on we tend to forget the arguments if we tend to forget the cheating we tend to forget the the narcissism and the rudeness and the bad feelings and we just remember the good times this is really a, a bit of a strange mechanism so it's really important that this time instead of sitting around and talking about and dreaming about and thinking about all of the good times to take a piece of paper and pen and begin to write down all the bad things, the bad memories, because you want to associate pain with this person. You want to always associate whatever it is you want to move away from with pain. And wherever you're going, you want to associate that with pleasure. So you want those feelings to come up of anger and betrayal and all those things that went wrong so that you can begin to have a more accurate picture of why this relationship needed to end. Maybe you didn't have the courage to end it and so he ended it, God ended it, circumstances ended it, but you would know deep in your heart that indeed this was a relationship that was worth ending. I would then say your third step is to inventory, love inventory. I say this to my girls, I've said this on this channel many times before. A relationship is a lesson. That's all at the end of the day it is, especially when it leaves our lives. It was a lesson we needed to learn. Learn not just about men, okay? Learn not just about that individual, but really learn about ourselves. What did we learn about ourselves in that relationship? What did we learn about the things that we love, enjoy, and really need to have present in our lives for us to feel loved and secure and happy? Because clearly, some some of those things were present and maybe you discovered those things in this relationship and what are the things that when they're present in our relationship with this person can bring a lot of hurt this is going to help you create your map your map for dating your emotional map for dating and this is how you create your core needs your five core needs and your five non-negotiables you know what you cannot and will not live with by the things that you were not able to live with in this relationship that brought you sorrow and the things that you were able and really need you probably experienced them or you needed the opposite of the non-negotiables so it's a great time to inventory your self-awareness journal that bit where you discover you and meet you under a different set of circumstances you see that the self the me the i is somebody who is very versatile. I don't respond, we don't respond to everything the same way. Depending on the pressure, the situations, what's at stake, we respond and we always want to know who the I is, the me, the myself, the self part of us under all situations and circumstances. So you wanna be able to really get to know yourself under that situation and circumstances. When you're in love, how do you show up? Next one is future focus. It's really important. The mind is designed to either fire old networks, neurological wiring, or to fire new pathways. And what you wanna do is begin to really focus on firing new pathways. You want to start to focus on your future. You know, for me, I would always take this heartbreak as a time to say, what is the thing I've been putting off? What's the book that needed to, that I've been putting off writing? I haven't had time to write because I've been so obsessed with this person. What's the business I wanted to start? How can I move my business forward? Whatever it is that, speaks of a future, a focus that is on the future. And as more as you fuel that, it begins to take energy away from those from those pathways, the, the firing energy from those pathways and begins to, 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 to put it in the direction of your future. And the last, but absolutely not least, one is dating other people. I hear you screaming at me from 
your heart to mine. I hear your heart going boom, 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 boom. Right, girl, you must be joking, <laughs> okay? I don't wanna date anyone, I don't wanna see anybody. But here's the thing, as we begin to date other people and begin to smell their pheromones, it begins to break down the chemistry in our bodies, it begins to chop it up a little bit so that it's not so condensed and not so powerful. Even if you don't like the other person, just being in masculine energy begins to break down the chemistry and what could have been a two year, very, very, very painful journey can easily become a month because seeing other people but also psychologically being in the presence of a man who actually wants to be there who actually wants to impress you actually spend time with you is actually really rewarding for the soul you're obviously going to shop a little bit more high value because your heart is not 100% invested in this person so you're kind of going and you're actually in a position where you can begin to make those moves and you never know it might be the next person that steals your heart away and that will be your story that you can tell of how a broken heart led you to the man of your dreams. I really want you to take seriously this step of dating other people. It is going to save you a heck of a lot of pain and struggle. The last one, I lied, the one that I gave you was not the last one, but I'm gonna give you the last one. But for me, the quickest, most profound, most powerful way of doing it. This is something that I did a lot when I used to date and I used to get easily attached and, and feel really disappointed when something didn't work out. So I worked out, I stumbled upon it by accident. I was actually fasting and praying over a guy that I'd lost and I wanted him back. But I found after the three day fast that I'd done, I didn't really care. It's like, Something had come out. I felt free. I felt liberated. I felt happy. I felt, oh, okay. Right. I want to um, suggest to you if you are somebody who fasts, whether it's for health, health reasons or spiritual reasons or weight loss reasons, fasting is a great energy tool. It's a tool that allows us to get rid of bad and old energy and opens up room for new energy. And so when we fast, especially if you're Christian and you're fasting, it's really to get rid of old energy and let the energy of the Holy Ghost come and take residence. If you're spiritual, it's a way to fast and open your spirit to new and exciting new things to come into your life. If you're just a faster, you'll find that you always feel better. Your body renews itself and can dump some of those chemicals that have, it's been, that have been in your body. So physiologically, emotionally, and spiritually, it is such a quick fix, okay? I'm not saying it's gonna work for everybody, but it works most of the time. Maybe for you, it might have to be a seven day fast or 30 day fast, but trust me, fasting is perfect. It's so good for recovery. I would literally fast three days and be over it, three days and over it, which allowed me to perpetually move forward, learn and grow. So that is how, and with of course the bonus tip at the end, that is how you can begin to move past uh, losing somebody that you love. I hope this video was helpful and will help you recover at this very difficult time. In the meantime, I'll see you on my next video. Take care of you. Love you lots.